The next question is being received from Chicago, USA. And uh, this question I have been receiving like uh, several times from several people, so I'd like to share this with you. I implies this question, if shaitan is logged, why Muslims still sin in Ramadan and while fasting? So the answer to this one is uh, we have to understand something. By the will of Allah, the shaitan are being logged in the month of uh, Ramadan. But we have to understand something. There is something which is more dangerous to us. That is our own nafs. If you read in uh, Surah Yusuf, I believe it's a verse number 53, it says, Your nafs always call you to do something evil thing. As a Muslim, we all know that when we are born, when we are born, we have our partner who is a shaitan, who is with us since we are born. And he's going to stay with us till we die. And he's not going to leave us alone. So basically, he's come, he communicates with our mind like 24 hours a day like putting an evil on our mind, like whispering in our hearts towards something like assumption, bad things, evil thing, calling towards something like wrong things. So basically there's something like worse than the shaitan, that is our own nafs. That is always uh, call us something which is against Allah. The, the nafs will not ask you, okay, uh, you need to go do something good for Allah. Okay, let's do, make an extra nafs for Allah. The nafs will not ask you. So basically, we have to force ourselves, uh, we have to surrender ourselves according to the commandments of Allah. So the question was that if shaitan is locked, why Muslim sin? So, so what happens, like if some Muslims are are weak in the iman and some muslims are are not strong so basically they are the victims of our nafs shaitan so when nafs our nafs and shaitan as the as the muslim uh, okay you do this and uh, you do that like let's watch movie like, like for example we are in a ramadan so since shaitan is locked but we are still fasting so, but inside we have a shaitan that who forces us and he wants us to destroy our fasting. And this is a really important point, like many Muslims does not understand. Like, let's say when we do our exam, like we have, we get like a hundred, we get a marks from out of hundred. So similarly, when we do our perfect fasting, Allah give us a hundred out of hundred. So for an example, uh, let's say our nafs ask us, okay, let's do something, uh, watch a TV. Let's say you're not watching something wrong, but I mean, like just a regular TV. It's nothing wrong in there, it's just a regular TV. Let's say some Islamic program or anything during your fasting. So basically, this is a really a uh, trick of a shaitan. He wants you to, to remove from your ibadah that you're supposed to be uh, spending in your adhkar. Uh, you're supposed to be uh, spending a time in reciting a Quran, but rather our shaitan nafs, he forces us that we do something so out of hundred, so our marks start keep going down. So this is the one example watching a TV. The another example is like uh, shaitan make us to talk on a useless things, like say. Uh, some evil person like a backbiting, uh, talking about a politics, talking about some leader, talking about scholars, talking about some some ministers, or it could be anything. Just basically the point is, it could be anything, but a baseless has a no uh, benefit in our fasting. Basically wasting of time, wasting of energy, wasting of our talking, wasting of our energy on a useless talks, and let me tell you something, this is something very important. A shaitan whispers in his heart that, okay, you are not doing something wrong. You are just like uh, talking about something which is like very important. 
uh, something like a social issue, you really need to talk about that and you really need to discuss about that, not, not understand something. In the Ramadan, we are supposed to uh, spend our time in our car and we're supposed to be spending in time in reciting a Quran and extra nawafils or do something good like making a lot of sadhkas, do something good. And there's another example. For an example, uh, this is something like a very extremely important point. Many sisters in our regular days, they do not go to, into the kitchen much. But when the Ramadan comes, they start going into the kitchen and start preparing for an iftar, wasting their whole day in the kitchen when they are supposed, they are not doing that in the regular days, but when the fasting days comes and they are wasting their time. So this is from the shaitan. The, we have to understand, Ramadan means we have to build a taqwa. And the taqwa is when we read the Sukhul Pakara in verse number uh, two, Allah says, Alif la mim zalik al kitabu la raiba fihe hudalil muttaqin. As Allah says in Surah Bakra, this is the book of guidance for those who have a taqwa. The taqwa means you have to have a self and a very strong control from the things that Allah forbade you to do. So we have to be careful from the things that we do. So these are may, may, there are many many examples. Especially our sister as the more victims of shaitan than our brothers, because the sisters uh, spend the time on iftar parties, and then the sisters calling another one, uh, another sister. Okay, uh, what are you preparing? Then they call another sister. Okay, what are you preparing? Oh, I made this and I made this and uh, and this wasn't good and useless talk. This has no effect of Ramadan. So basically out of 100, so when we finish our 24 hours fasting, uh, our 24 hours a day, uh, and we spend our few hours for the fasting, what happens that from out of 100, we come down to, let's say after the whole day of Ramadan and fasting and everything, and uh, this becomes like we left with only 20 marks and 25 marks. So basically, we were supposed to do, we were supposed to do what was being ordained by Allah. But we are not doing something, and uh, we are doing something which we like. We have to understand in the hadith, the Prophet ﷺ said, "If you cannot control yourself and you are doing something wrong, and uh, then Allah does not need your fasting. So basically what happened, like somebody say, I did all 30 days fasting and I did this and I did that. And uh, all the fasting is are wasted because uh, during our from the suhoor time and till iftar time, the most of the time we have to spend in adhkar and uh, we have to spend our time in reciting a Quran and uh, doing something good and that pleases Allah and that makes our hundred we, we, we don't get a hundred but we at least we can get a 90 or 95 marks out of hundred so but basically we're doing something like a social things and uh, unbenefiting things that is really uh, destroying our fast and uh, we're coming down and we left with the, finally when we end of the day we don't leave left with anything because basically what we are supposed to do we are not doing it so we are falling our nafs. So this is what the definition means like when the shaitan is locked but our nafs is open. When we read the Surah Baqarah verse number 208, Allah says, Allah says, put yourself into the uh, Islam, in the folder of Islam completely and do not leave anything that you being uh, the victim of shaitan and he is going to use you to do something which is not right so basically uh, the allah says in the quran you have to stick with the uh, the quran and with the fold of islam and do not leave yourself a loose that shaitan can use you uh, for his benefit so rather we have to surrender our wishes and we have to 
give up our desires and uh, we have to submit ourselves to Allah and this is what uh, what uh, this is what this question means when Allah has chained all shaitan then why is the Muslim is doing sin so this is the way and uh, there's another example they there are many TV Islamic programs being going on in countries like Pakistan, India, or maybe some other countries. I'm not familiar with that, but I'm familiar with these countries like India and Pakistan. They uh, made these uh, programs to to help the audience and the viewers to learn Islam. But this is not learning Islam, but basically they are keeping away the Muslims from their ibadah because what happens like they are supposed to be doing the dhikr and they are supposed to be doing the ibadah but rather but rather they are wasting their time and waiting for the time to, like when this program is going to come on the TV and they are going to sit in the front of the TV and start watching the program and what happens in one hour two hours you wasted all your time that you are supposed to be doing adhkar and that you are supposed to be reciting a Quran and doing something uh, very good which is benefiting and keep your fasting perfect these programs are uh, not Islamic but rather in the name of Islam they are running their businesses and they are making money unless the the program is about only a question and answer they do not have an entertainment and uh, they do not have any host and they do not have anything and uh, mashallah we have a lot of scholars they're doing uh, programs in Ramadan they're getting uh, uh, live phone calls from them uh, this is the program that we, we need to uh, pay attention to that that help us to understand how can we make our more better um, ourselves in Ramadan and then there's another example in India and Pakistan and I'm not familiar with other countries our our Muslim sisters, they usually so much addicted uh, a TV drama serials. So what happens like even in the Ramadan, uh, they are being addicted and they are wasting time watching the dramas. But we have to understand in the Ramadan, we have to cut ourselves from everything and we have to totally give this uh, Ramadan just for the sake of Allah because all, this month totally belongs to Allah. This is like uh, Allah gave us a chance to, to how can uh, we make ourselves better for Ramadan that we are doing in 30 days that help us to make us strong that we can live in uh, another 11 months that this is our like uh, that like live, we are living in a hostel and we are learning something to make ourselves like you know we are in like a military training and then we are making ourselves to be strong enough to, to be a very good army person so similarly allah has uh, given us this opportunity that uh, we have to make ourselves uh, to be a good muslim and we have to have a taqwa so this is the best month that you have so take an opportunity and do not waste it by on any useless thing things your time uh, spend in your other car spend in reciting a quran and do some excellent nawafils and also do a tahajjud and inshallah may allah bless all our muslim brothers and sisters Oh